So there's a way to make Coco happy, however. So let's see. We can uh, stay, inspect the portraits. So cute as kittens, not the time, but we are cute. The brown angel. Was that zombie really Patches? And undoubtedly. Why is Patches so mean to you? Before I met all of you, Patches and I were friends. He really trusted me, but I said something that really hurt his feelings. What'd you say? Oh, just we're all thinking now. That he's a twisted piece of shit who's unworthy of all relations. Well, I didn't quite say it like that. I just told him what I thought of him and he didn't like it. Now he's holding a grudge against me like some kind of child. Hmm. Okay. We get pity patches. I don't know what that does. Okay, pity patches gets hearts there. It must feel horrible knowing so many people hate you. It almost feels like Patches needs a hug. You're so soft, Olive. As much as I love hearing about how evil Patches are, I think you guys better go find us a weapon. Hmm, interesting. I wonder what that does later on. I don't know, it depends on the ending, I guess. Let me just go back real quick. But then... Okay, we'll, we'll grieve Angel Rub for now, though. Okay, that breaks his heart. That makes him sound pretty bad. Someone should bite him. Sparky pounds the door once more, or the crack in the wood lengthens. Okay, fighting weapon, alright. So let's go, let's see. Back down here. Into the bathroom, by the way. No weapon here. Unless you want to drown him. Drown him? With these widowed paws? I think you're super talented, Coco. Talented to think of something else. Olive is trembling. You're right, I am talented. Let's think of something else. Okay. Just save. So this, is, this is like, okay, so this is the Coco plan. I'm trying to make her like me so that maybe she survives. I don't know. For a problem, are you gonna give him a bath? A bath with Sparky? You know, daydreaming about having a bath with Sparky would make it hard to kill him. Toilet. Uh, how do we be Sparky with a toilet? Suggest ideas. Maybe you can scare him away with how loud the toilet is. No. Maybe you can pretend we're using it as Sparky to polite and interrupt important business. No. Maybe we can show him how gross and spooky it is how a toilet tank is. No. Wait, that's perfect. Coco lifts the lid of the tank of the toilet. It's heavy and the ceramic. This'll knock him out. Maybe he'll do even more. What? The loud crash is heard through the bathroom door. Ah! That must be him. Let's go! Okay, this is also another route. Oh my god, so many ways to go. Uh, let's see. Well, let's let's see what happens here, though. The bedroom door has broken down. Sparky grabs Brownie. Ah, why me? Isn't the angel the one you're all mad at? Oh, thanks. Sparky grips Brownie's neck. All this jumps on Sparky's back, almost knocking him over. Brownie escapes his grasp. Bat dog! Move, Olive! Olive instinctively hops off Sparky, narrowly missing a fatal blow. Again, this is brain matter. Coco smashes Sparky's head into a toilet lid. His body falls to the floor. Ah! Now it's not the time. We still need... Coco noticed the corner of our wow, zombies rising from the living room. What? When did they? You broke my toy. It took us weeks to go down his psyche. Without hesitation, Coco lunges at Patches. He stops her in the tracks. That breaks her neck. Okay, so, you know, using a toilet lid probably isn't the best weapon. Yeah, Coco! It'd be pretty easy to kill you all here, but I think the zombies deserve a little justice too. Olive manages to jump onto Patches. Huh. Okay, oh interesting. So, if you go through the toilet route, however, there's a way to maybe... Go to his ending. I don't know, hug him, but... Alright, bite him. Olive angrily bites Patches all over. Their nubby teeth don't do much. You're kidding me, right? You think you're gonna save your friends with your stupid teeth? Patches jabs Olive in the mouth, knocking out some teeth. Ow! Olive holds back Patches' arms, but ends up pulling one right off his rotting body. Ah! Sorry! I mean, you're a big meanie, you probably deserve this. Olive smacks Patches in the face with his own arm. Enough! Using Coco's wand, Patches binds Olive, Brownie, and Angel together. I was going to let the zombies have you, but I think I'd rather be the one to cause your suffering. Patches tightens the vines around Brownie. Ah, no, stop! Until she slices apart. Alright. Ah! The wires tighten around Angel next. Mm. Well, my god, this game is very good. It's too late, Angel. No, no, no. If you hadn't made me so angry, maybe your friends wouldn't have died so horribly. The wires tighten around all of next. And then we also get turned into pieces of meat. Hey, made a lot of people happy. All right. There again, though. All right, interesting. Hmm. How about this? I don't know if this will work, but uh, agree of angel. No, no, pity patches actually. 
I don't know if there's any other ways to do something about that, but let's see. Pity patches. Inspect the toilet. Suggest ideas. Leave. Now this time, so that was the same scene. Let's try hugging him? This would probably not work. We're still gonna die, but still. Let's try. They're just hugging him though, really tight. I'm sorry, Patches. I'm sorry Angel hurt your feelings, then you died and you had to come back like this. I'm sorry, I hope it's not painful being a zombie. Get the fuck off me. Patches sends Olive flying. Hit the wall and slide down to the winning arms of a horde of zombies. Wait! They mindlessly tear into all his flesh. Their friends make a futile attempt to fight the zombies off. Patches watches silently. Okay. You know, this is, Patches is too much of a psycho. You can't use the power of love to change him, as it turns out. So, let's go back. Alright. Let's leave. Let's go uh, downstairs. This part again. And we have uh, several choices here. So I wonder, let's see. What happens if we take, uh, again, yeah, let's do the same plan as before. That sounds perfect. You're so smart. Okay. Leave. So we're back here again. So, you know, there's a little scuffle outside the door. Um, we go inside. Coco is alive this time, though, because why not? Because, you know, she's so smart. Coco is happily sitting in the tree as planned. Coco! Olive quickly pushes the window open. Coco, you're okay. Olive, it worked. I told you. Well, a knife pierces Olive's throat. Olive? Patches leans out of the window over Olive's dead body. Ah, oh, little kitty stuck in the tree? I'll help cut you down. Before Patches can send a burst of magic, Coco dashes off to the tree into another, and then another. She's gone in the blink of an eye. Well, 4 out of 5 is still pretty good. Okay. That time, Coco survives, but, you know. And, well, that also, that still implies that she dies later, though. You can see the halo. Anyway. So that's the, you know, the Coco plan working out, but not really. <laughs> So let's see. All right, I don't know. Let's see. What else is there to do? Hmm. This time, let's go back here. Let's uh, leave back here. Go back downstairs. Let's see. Let's try the knife. Where'd all the knives go? This would have been so perfect. Just a few stabs and olive grumbles. And Sparky would have been incapacitated because we'll use the knife to uh, cut his tendons. And I love Sparky's tendons. Ugh. I'm sorry for getting you all involved. Forgive. Ah, Coco, it's not your fault. I just hope we don't have to hurt anyone. Me too, honestly. Alright, okay, so the knives weren't really an option. Well, probably because, uh, Patches took all the knives. Anyway, let's try this again. Trust the meat. Trust the meat. Trust the meat. They're all angry and hurt. Can I kill them again? Alright, this time we're back here. So this is one of the first choices I made. Let's make our wish. My birthday wish is for you to trust the meat. There was a note on your door. It said you owe me one birthday wish. Coco begrudgingly steps out of the way. Olive is surprised this worked. Olive finds a tray in the cupboards and scoops as much as meat onto it as possible. They walk with it towards the door. They kick the chair out from under the doorknob. Olive, what are you doing? The door bursts open and the zombies scream into the kitchen. Coco panics and jumps on the kitchen table. Olive falls in order to gain some height. And allows voice they man can manage they scream. Wait! We're gonna talk this out over an assortment of delicious meats. I start throwing chunks of meat into the crowd zombies. Holy shit, is this really how I'm gonna die? The zombies. Start eating the meat. Olive continues throwing meat at the zombies. It's a bloodbath, the likes of which they've never seen. Eventually the tray empties and all that's left is a small pool of blood. Okay, now let's talk. Well, what do you guys want? Me. No, you morons, we want revenge. Yeah, revenge. Okay, revenge, but revenge won't let you get your lives back or your bodies fixed. Maybe revenge doesn't make you happy. Happy? Yeah, what makes me happy is eating snacks with a bunch of really nice friends. You could all be my friends. Friends? Yeah, friends. If you help us get Coco's magic wand back, we can fix you up using her magic. Uh, really? That sounds... A flurry of knives suddenly flies through the door. They zip around, slicing and stabbing everything in their path. Get down, Olive! Coco grabs Olive and posts them under the kitchen table. The knives have sliced a path through the zombies. 
Uh, stabbing traitors, a beloved pastime. Now, where are you two? I need to add you to my collection. Sparky is taking care of the others as we speak. Patches steps forward right into the tray of blood. So, this is what won them over, huh? A bunch of disgusting meat and empty promises. I'll never understand how others are so quick to trust. And after Ginger gave them life and gave them justice, it still was enough to keep them loyal. Patches notices Alice's tail sticking out from under the kitchen table. <laughs> there you are. Patches reaches for Alice's tail, but the zombie playing dead on the ground grabs his leg. Uh, ironic, a zombie playing dead. He hits the floor and loses grip on the wand. Coco scrambles out from under the table to grab it. No! Coco sends a massive blast of energy at Patches. The kitchen is filled with bright green light. Patches is gone. Uh, did you vaporize him? Uh, no, he got away. I wonder who Ginger is. Screaming is heard from upstairs. Angel and Brownie. Sparky. We need to go. Okay, interesting. So now Patches is out of the picture. Or at least we have the wand anyway. What happens now? Kill your friends die. Let's go. No, oh, what is going on? I gave all the meat to the zombies. What if Sparkly wants to try some once he's all fixed up? Well, then he can eat my, my fist because we're going to go upstairs right now. He's going to pay for your dawdling. We need to go. Oh yeah, I guess they are pretty neat. The cast iron. By cast iron, I cast an iron spell on them. It helps retain the shape of the extreme heat and pressure. It's even a little poisonous. That couple of brewing poses just adds to the deadliness. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Stop distracting me. We need to go. Okay. Let's go. Shredded zombies are strewn about, likely from Patches' earlier tantrum. The ones that are able to move don't seem to want to hurt Coco or Olive, they're just mingling and looking at Olive's birthday cake. Why on earth was in that meat? Oh, it's just really yummy. <laughs> okay. Um... Okay, we have options though. What's this thing? Spectator. Let's go, Olive! Coco grabs a cushion and whips at Olive's face. Feathers fly everywhere. We need to go! Hello, fight? No! Patches fight! Sparky fight! No pillow fight! Aww. The zombies and Olive look disappointed. It's, a, it's the perfect time for a, a walk, right Olive? Yeah! I will strangle you and feel nothing if you don't go upstairs right now. <laughs> okay. Bye. Olive and Coco make it upstairs to find Brownie knocked down at Sparky's feet. Angel has Sparky in a choker but doesn't seem to phase him. Sparky stomps on Brownie's leg, breaking it. Oh no. Ah! He grabs hold of Angel's arms from around his neck and crushes it in his grip. Ah. Sparky swings Angel by his broken arm onto the ground. Stop! Who are you? Why are you doing this? All Sparky does is shoot Oliver a smile. Sparky slams into the ground as though gravity had multiplied. Ugh. I'll make you a few pain worse than death. Once you're out of that body, that is. Ugh. Whatever soul is inhabiting Sparky's body is forced out. Yeah, I knew it. It's this. It's this dog. We saw. We saw her before, actually, in the bathroom. In uh, the first game, anyway. Very, very briefly mentioned. You know, actually, we, I think we made a joke. You know, about how she was cut in half or something. Anyway, the soul looks a little disorientated. Ah, that that dog. The ghostly dog escapes with a wall. Ah, who cares, Angel. Coco runs to Angel and Brownie's inside. Angel, are you okay? Brownie? Ugh. Ow. Is that all, really all you have to say? Um, I'm a little stunned at everything that's happened, and I'm in a lot of pain, so yes. Ow is, uh, is all I have to say. Uh, I'm just glad I didn't hold the door while Brownie made your mom jokes for nothing. I thought I could take him down with sick burns. I'm just glad you're okay, both of you. That dog. Oh wait, Sparky, is, okay? is he okay? It might take a moment for his soul to find his way back to his body. Sparky's body starts to stir. Oh, that's him now. Sparky coughs a bit and slowly sits up, dazed. Olive? Brownie? Oh, is your leg broken? Yeah, you broke it. What? Oh no. Oh fuck. I can't believe it. I can't believe I let him knock me out and now look at you. You seem to have broken my arm as well. No. No. Uh, don't start howling, you guys. It's so lame. <laughs> Somebody doing the howling like dogs. Oh uh, wait, I don't hear the voices anymore. How'd you guys fix me? You are possessed. I forced the spirit out, but she's fun away to dog's nose where. Probably back to Patches for further instructions. Uh, they could attack us at any moment. We need a we need to find her. You've got to be kidding me. Now's not the time. We need to make a plan. The zombies, they can help us. 
Zombies? Alright, I guess some of them are on our side now. They're all on our side. They're all good friends and all good dogs. All in wiggles and excitement, their friends do not share the same sentiment. Alright, let's go downstairs and make a plan with them. Can you walk, Sparky? Sparky stands up slowly. He's a little wobbly but seems to be well enough. Yep. And you, Brownie? Shut the hell up. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Sparky, you're buff. You carry her. I guess this is the least I could do. Brownie reluctantly allows herself to be carried. Chapter 3! Interesting. There's more! Even more? I don't know how much more, but I guess we'll see. Alright. So, we are in Chapter 3 now. This, this game is a lot longer than the first one, it seems. A lot more endings to get, which is interesting. But let's see. So... Coco jumps onto the living room table, knocking a bunch of plates over and threatening to ruin the lovely birthday cake. Alright, Zombos, here's a plan that you want your, uh, your, your bodies healed and your lives back. Bodies? The zombies gather around, moaning and shambling less violently than before. Your so-called saviors, Patches and what's her name? I think it was Ginger. Patches and Ginger have betrayed you. They're going to attack at any moment to try and wipe every single one of us out. But only because together we're strong enough to take them out. So fan out, keep an eye out for them. If you find them, let me know and I'll take care of the rest. Understood? Bodies! Friends! The zombies slowly make their way out of the living room, permeating every area of the estate. Ah, it's gonna take forever to get the smell of a dead dog out of this house. Wait, so what are we going to do? We're going to sit the hell down and wait for them to find Patches and Ginger. But I want to help. Who's going to do a better job finding them? One living dog or a thousand dead ones? I mean, I like to think I'm a lot smarter than a bunch of rotting corpses. Ah, uh, okay, okay. If you want to help, go get me a first aid kit from the bathroom upstairs. Okay. Oh, and Olive, you watch him. Make sure he doesn't do anything stupid or get himself possessed again. Okie dokie. Alright. This really is a full-fledged story, you know? Way more content than last time. Let's see. Hmm. What do you know? I mean, I asked we, we could just do exactly what she said. Let's do that. Let's, uh, let's see. Look under the sink. And Mr. Products is a small first aid kit. I wonder why she needs this. Can she just heal Angel and Brownie using magic? Oh, right. I'm not sure what the extent of her abilities are. I guess if she could heal, she could have just healed Angel's body instead of giving him patches. Oh. Oh, no. I don't think she can undo death, but she promised the zombies she fixed the bodies. But that means she's gonna break her promise. That'll be all sad. I think they'll be more than just sad. We can't tell anybody about this or else the zombies will freak out. Do you think see the, them seeing the first aid kit, they'll get suspicious? As the two speak in hushed whispers, the bathroom door opens, a zombie peers in. Oh, sorry. We'll knock next time. Nice first aid kit. The zombies slowly shamble away. Huh, I guess we're okay. <laughs> okay, the zombies are not very smart as it turns out. Sparky, you might be too tall to fit in this tub. <laughs> I guess that'll happen when everything's here is made for cats. Alright, oh, your bathtub must be huge. Yeah, but my family doesn't really use it. We just hose off in the yard. Okay, interesting lore about this universe. The dog people just hose off in the yard. You guys are so cute. I mean, I guess you could do that as a human as well. I don't know how efficient it is. You know, would you save water or would you waste more water? I don't know. Um, and also, it'll probably be very cold if you don't have fur. Okay. Uh, I guess, yeah. Just, just go downstairs and just, you know. Hi, right, here it is. Here it is, Coco. All of hands over the first aid kit. Fantastic. Now what? Now scram! I need to take care of Brownie the Angel's injuries. First things first, sanitation. Why? Brownie becomes incredibly flustered. Wait, 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 here, let me do it. I do not want Sparky licking me. No, I won't. Licking is very archaic. I took a sports medicine class, so no worries. Sparky shows Coco how to clean and dress Brownie's and Angel's wounds. Everyone seems so relaxed together and makes Olive super happy. They find a marker and draw little hearts and stars in their friends' bandages. There, all done. Wow, you know what? You're not as dumb as I thought you were. Uh, thanks? So, out of curiosity, 
you told the zombies you'd take care of the rest once they found Patches and Ginger. You mean kill them, right? How, with magic? Bahaha! <laughs> oh, is that what this is? How? Oh, but what is? You were just teaching me for a say, so I teach you sorcery in return. Guess getting possessed really makes a dog really feel helpless without any magic, huh? Sparky looks very uncomfortable. I'm just curious, I... Sparky, my friend. It's completely understandable. The art of magic is a much sought after skill. Only passed down from generation of magical felines to generation of magical felines. I suppose you're lucky to have a rare friend such as I. I'd be happy to tell you how I'll defeat Passion Ginger and save this sorry bunch. Brownie giggles, enamored by Coco's unwavering arrogance. The plan is to draw a magic circle. You remember the one from the school, right? Or the one in my room? All the, uh, Coco uses Olive's marker to draw the magic circle on the scrap piece of bandage. The circle just needs to be big enough for a soul to pass through. You can turn it into a portal with a wand. From the portal, you can summon demons and spirits from an inferno, from purgatory, from wherever. And you can also banish things into it. Just force them into the portal and shut it. Ta-da! Your problem is gone forever. Sparky leans uncomfortably close to Coco. Brownie looks a little annoyed. Coco, you're so flipping cool. <laughs> Yuri. Uh, I know, I know. Oh uh, yeah, cool. So, now what? Now scram! You're such a restless dog. Is learning about magic really all that dull? Just wait here until Patches and Ginger show up. Oh, okay. Sparky looks a little antsy. Can I go for a walk? Coco groans. Olive, you go with him. Like I said before, don't let him do anything stupid. Uh, okie dokie. Okay. Inspect dead zombies. The zombies capable of walking have left, while the rest are uh, while the rest are strewn about the room. They look pretty relaxed just lying around. I guess it's not much of a living room anymore. Uh, good one, Olive. Good one, Olive. Coco, Brownie, and Angel are talking in hushed whispers. Whether we're talking about seems to be very private. Olive, what the heck are you doing here? Aren't you taking Sparky for a walk? I'm just warming up. You know how Sparky is. Big dog, hard to keep up with. Uh, have fun with that. Okay. Let's go, I don't know, kitchen. Knives? All oh, knives are missing. Well, that can't be good. Well, this would have done well against the zombies. Uh, oh, thank dog we didn't have to use them. Ah, oh, no meat? I want to try some now that I'm not completely traumatized by the smell of flesh and blood. Offer, <laughs> offer blood. Um... Not for cake. There's still cake in the living room. Oh right, I guess cooked meat shaped like cake is way better than raw meat shaped like a piece of raw meat. Can't eat, can't eat the cake right now though. Go back upstairs. Gonna expect the portraits. The zombies are appreciating the portrait. It appears they don't recognize the cute kittens as the ones who killed them back at Hachiko High. Okay. And go back to the bedroom. The zombies having a snooze in the top bunk. Okay, you notice, yeah, the, you notice the little zombies are just like, hang around the different rooms. It's my desk. Look at these posh books and potions. Coco must be super smart. Yeah. I have a lot of respect for people who can just sit for hours and study. Just think about it, it makes me want to run around in circles. I bet you could do anything if you put your mind to it. There's a magic circle. I wonder how any of this magic stuff works. It'd be helpful to know how to use magic, right? You want to be a witch, Sparky? Yeah. I mean... If it meant I could be more of use, of course. It's not great knowing I was the weakest link. The weakest? But you're so cool and tall and tantrum and... Uh, thanks, Olive, but you know what I mean, right? I never want to be possessed again. No. Lose heart. The zombies look like they're having so much fun. Okay. Downstairs. Uh, okay, fine. Exit the house, I guess. Inspect the zombies. The zombies are wandering around, bumping into each other. Uh, hello. Hey. Somehow a zombie accidentally smacks his head on a wall. I can't believe Coco trusted the search of these guys. They're doing their best. Do you think Patches likes being an undead cat? Does it matter? I'd say he deserves it. If it didn't mean he could crash a party and terror us all. If he wanted to come, he could just ask. Now where are we walking? The forest? Uh, sort of. I just have a feeling that Ginger isn't going to be in the house. Why would she? We have the wand and the zombies on our side. She and Patches are at a total disadvantage there, so I'm gonna search for them in the forest. It sounds a little dangerous, but I guess it'll be nice walking together in the woods without a bunch of zombies chasing us. Hmm, interesting. 
so if Sparky go can go alone, or Sparky stays with Olive. Hmm. Interesting. So I wonder how you do that, though. That, that would that would involve like, yeah, this is a, I want to see the bad end, but it would it involves decreasing his hearts in the first place. That's hard to do unless I want to go from the very beginning. You know, I want to start from the very beginning. I'm not sure how you would do it. Go back here. Actually, no, maybe try this. How about this? Offer blood? Blood's still yummy. <laughs> okay. And then leave and then go upstairs. What was it? Like... Hmm. What, like, uh... What decreased... I can't remember. What, what decreased his, like, um... His thing? Okay, so that makes his heart smaller. It's not completely destroyed, you know, it's not completely shrunken heart, but it's pretty small. So I wonder if that would allow me to go activate his other route. Hmm. Damn it. The thing is, I want to see what happens if you go. he goes alone, is the thing, you know? I want to see what happens. I don't know how to do that. Power of time travel. I can like use my scroll wheel. Hmm. Everything else would increase his uh, attraction points. It's such a you know small thing, but I, I want to see what happens though. It's a bad end, but you know what? Just just so I want I I want to see what happens. This is gonna like this is gonna be such a all the way, I have to go all the way back, but. I mean, it's pretty fast. We can skip, right? Let's see. This, uh, this is him without any hearts, I think. So I go back downstairs. Enter. Kitchen. Where was it? Upstairs. Bathroom. Top brownie. Brownie. Yeah. Skip. D. Skip. Skip. Into the bedroom. Enter. Skip. Skip. This goes back over here. So let's see, how do we win? We gotta trust the meat, right? Back bridge. Trust the meat. Trust the meat. Trust the meat. Use the power of the birthday wish. Uh, go upstairs. Alright. Okay, so we can't go there yet. Okay, so okay, I want I want to make sure, I want to you know see the other ending, right? I assume it's a different ending. If he goes alone, I imagine bad things happen. If I had to guess, let's see. Inspect the uh, thing. It's just the first aid kit. Go back downstairs. Let's stay. Talk to the. Okay, enter the kitchen. Lick the blood, and now he hates us. So, what happens if he hates us? Let me just save here as well. He hates us, and we let him go alone. That sounds like a horrible idea. Let's see what happens. Yeah. Oh, uh, you're not coming. Huh? No, it's way too dangerous for you. Just stay here like a good dog, and don't tell anyone where I went. That sounds like a bad idea. Olive, please, I need to do this alone. It's my fault Ginger possessed me, and I wasn't strong enough to fight her off. I need to get... Revenge. Revenge? <laughs> uh, maybe that's a bad word for it. Look, I'll be okay. I have a trump card of sorts. Sparky gives Olive a big hug and kiss on the head. I'll see you later. Okay. So he goes alone this time. I wonder what happens. Olive, what the heck are you doing here? Aren't you taking Sparky for a walk? 
Sparky kind of took himself for a walk. What? Well, he wanted to go into the woods and uh, sniff around. What? For what? Sniff for what? Uh, you know, snacks, bones, other dogs, normal stuff. And Ginger. What? That's strange. I thought Sparky was a lot smarter than this. Yeah, are you sure, Olive? When I walked through the woods earlier with him, all he talked about was how sad he'd be if you were alone. He said he has some kind of trump card? Whatever, it doesn't matter. Angel Brownie, you stay here. I'm going to the woods to find Sparky. Maybe I can use my magic to... Coco digs around her dress. What? Where, where's my wand? Oh, that's the trump card. Uh-oh. You think... He stole the wand? Well, he's a good boy. I suppose getting possessed by a crazed demon and almost killing all of your friends can make you do strange things. And he says he did say something about getting revenge. That bastard! Ah, we just got the wand back too! Maybe he'll win. He doesn't even know how to use it. We need to find him before Ginger Apaches does. My arm may be broken, but I still think I could help. Huh? Don't push an angel. You neither, Brownie. I didn't even say anything. Let's go, Olive. We should find weapons before we go into the woods. Alright. Interesting. Huh. This is... I don't know. Is this the correct ending or the worst ending? I mean, I'm not worried about zombies eating him. Okay, I guess we grab these. Olive follows Susan can hardly lift her head. What? You're a dog. How are you so weak? I just kind of nap all day when I'm not at school. I guess that's relatable. We'll have to find you something else. Mm, no knives. More straightforward. Here's a toilet lid. Try it out. It's still pretty heavy. Ah, who cares? You can still wave it around, although you could try to be a little more menacing with it. Eh, we're... We'll work on that. Let's get going. Okay. Into the woods. Looks like we're as prepared as we can be. Let's go. Okay. Keep quiet. Branches and dried up leaves crunch under their paws. Olive can't help but feel dread. Olive wonders if everyone had died at school their souls were banished to these dark woods. They shake their head to think about bacon instead. Ah, okay. <laughs> Deep in the woods is a cellar entrance where Sparky is found, strapped down and dissected. Sparky! Holy shit, he's still alive. I think I'm gonna be sick. Uh, run. Hello, kitten. Hello, puppy. It's cut in half. Well, what the hell happened to you? This piece of shit banished Ginger to an inferno. And he really did a number on me too. Too bad though. I got a hold of the wand and have been making him pay ever since. Why would you do this? Now you're both so hurt. This body isn't long for this world. But I'll find my way back. I always do. Patches had sparked in a fire with the wand. The magic ember spread in an instant. No! Olive and Coco scramble to find a way out of the woods. But they're completely surrounded. Every trace of them is burnt away until there's nothing left. Ah. You died! That was just inferno. You, you just all... Got burnt into a crisp. Okay, so that's what happens if you let him go alone, obviously. It's interesting, there's a little section though that you go with, you know, uh, where you go with Coco, but you know, nothing really happens. You still just die anyway, can't do much about that. However, let's do this all over again. Whoop, go back here. So this time, however, let's go with him because we have high enough affection points, I guess. In all honestly, it's probably too dangerous for you. Huh? But I'm kind of afraid to go alone. It'd be really nice to have you with me. Just make sure you stay close, okay? Please don't make me regret taking you along. I don't know what I'd do if you got hurt because of me. Oh, Sparky. No problem. I'll be your guard dog. Oh, thanks, Olive. Okay. You could stay, though. Something I'm gonna do before we go. Hmm. Nah, let's just go. Uh, we could talk. It's pretty spooky out here, but way less spooky when you're not running from a horde of zombies. Yeah, I bet. I walked here with Brownie, so it wasn't too bad. To be honest, we should have stopped by your place and picked you up. The Brownie was adamant that the party would be so more surprising if you just walked here alone. Eh, yeah, she's so silly. She told me about the party days ago. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm lucky to have friends so silly that let me break their limbs with no retaliation. Do you think Passion and Gingers are like us? Friends? Uh, it's hard to believe that either could be sympathetic enough to feel anything of it for another living creature. They're sympathetic. If they did, though, I'm not sure how I feel about that. Hmm. It went down, though. Sparky is quiet. 
So what we will do when we find them? How about we make fun of them until they chase us and we can lead them back to the party? And then they'll see how nice everything is when we are all together. They can help us decorate Brownie and Angels' bandages some more and, and help us eat cake and maybe even stitch up the zombies. Olive. Sparky laughs awkwardly. I'm glad you're here with me. I know you think I'm not a lot, I'm a lot stronger and braver than everyone else, but I re I'd be really sad out here alone. Oh yeah, it is pretty scary out here. I'm glad you're with me too, Sparky. Whoa, a super secret cellar. It's got a big lock on it. Muffled sounds can be heard from within. All of his Sparky press their ears against the door. Someone is sobbing loudly. It sounds like Ginger. She's all alone and crying. We need to get in to help her. Sparky tries to open the cellar door but it won't budge. Maybe Coco and Angel know where the key is. Let's run back in and tell them. Wait, I have a better idea. Sparky reaches into his jacket and pulls out Coco's wand. Huh? How'd you get that? He blasts the lock right off. The sobbing from within the cellar goes uninterrupted. Sorry, Olive. I stole the wand from Coco while she was distracted, but it was for a good reason. I'm going to kill Ginger. What? Oh, sorry. I mean banish her. Oh, I guess that's better? But shouldn't we let the zombies and Coco take care of this? Coco would be super mad that we took her wand. And we might get hurt if we face Ginger alone. I need to be the one to face her. No one else can get hurt. Sparky sighs and pats Olive on the head. You're too cute to stop me. Just wait up here, okay? Sparky lifts the cellar door. A heavy cellar door up. Moonlight streams onto the steps headed down into the darkness. He enters, not waiting for Olive. They wait around a little. With a fit of anxiety, they end up scampering down the steps behind him. Okay. Olive fumbles in the dark for a bit. They bump into someone. Sparky finds a pole cord attached to a light. Jeez, Olive. I told you to wait outside. It's been only in like 10 seconds. I, it felt a little lo longer to me, sorry. In the dim light, they find Ginger sobbing. Okay. More to this. Uh, save. Huh? Hey, Ginger, right? Me. You recognize me, don't you? You took my body. Ginger's ignoring Sparky. Ugh. Look, I'm trying here. I'm trying very hard to find a reason not to kill you. Apologize. Show remorse. Tell Patches forced you to do all of this. Ginger goes quiet. How can you kill me? If I'm already dead. You're kidding me, right? Ginger sniffles. Sparky sighs. He pulls on the mark and begins drawing an ominous circle on the ground. Ginger doesn't bat an eye. The circle is complete. With one swing of the wand, it bursts into bright orange flames. Hmm. I guess we'll stand by. Are we gonna do this the hard way? No. I'll go. Ginger stands up and floats slowly towards the circle. At least this way. Patches will never have to deal with me again. Not exactly. I'm gonna send him to Inferno as well. What? Before Ginger can contest further, she's swallowed up by the portal's flames. No. You made her so sad. That's just before she left. Come on, Olive. We need to find Patches. This can all be over. Sparky leaves the cellar. I expect jack -lantern. There's a shriveled old jack lantern sitting on a barrel. Oh, okay, that's it. Hmm. Suspicious, though. Anyway. Olive attempts to leave the cellar, but it seems the doors have been closed on them. Yeah. They push the door as hard as they can. It won't budge. It almost seems to be magically sealed. Sparky? Help! I'm locked in! They press their ear against the heavy door. They can hear yelling on the other side. Something crashes against the door. It still won't budge. Sparky, 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 are you okay? Blood begins to seep under the door. Ah! Olive? Or... Patch's voice can be heard through the Who said that? Oh, it's Patch's. Well, two dogs with one stone isn't too bad at all. I think I know a spell that will take care of you. What? Patches, I can't hear... Waves of blood are gushing from under and around the door. Ah. They attempt to push and claw the door, but it won't budge. The waves cause Olive to slip. They can't get close to the door without a jet of blood pushing them back. Olive backs up against the end of the cellar. Please, Patches! Olive is waist deep in blood. Sparky! Olive is neck deep in blood. Ginger! Olive is submerged. Their little lungs fill with blood. And they drown in blood. They could have. I guess they could they, well, they wouldn't be able to swim back up because the doors were locked and everything. I guess. Somehow, I guess, you know, it was also. Like, uh. Airtight, you know? I know we're here to commit a horrible deed, but. Olive scratches away at the bottom of the crumbling jack-o'-lantern. 
Are you sticking on the head? Okay. Woo! <laughs> Damn it, Olive. I can't take anything seriously when you're like this. Alright, not an idiot. Uh, stop him this time. Olive punches Sparky square in the jaw. Uh, Olive? They continue batting at him. Uh, bat dog! Their soft paws hurt nothing but Sparky's guilty conscience. And that's the true damage. Uh, sh she's the bat dog. No, you're ba both bat dogs. Olive grabs the wand from Sparky. Ginger sniffles. Sparky is silent. Olive scampers toward Ginger. Why are you crying? Do you want to talk about it? I failed. I'm a failure. Ginger continues sobbing. Olive tries to pat her on the back. But the, the paw phases through her body. They just pretend to pet her instead. Patches. He won't talk to me. I don't know what to do. Before I met him, I had nothing to live for. I had no one. All I had were these strange abilities. Abilities that labeled me as a freak. Until I found him. As alone and strange as I was. Alive, we were alone. But in death, we found each other. Kindred spirits. Mm. If not for him, I would just stayed in the inferno forever. But he gave me a reason to use my abilities to come back here. But now I have no one. I'm sorry, Olive. Sparky. I really am pathetic and worthless. Just send me to the inferno where I belong. Ginger. That's what you wanted to hear, right? Just banish me! Ah. Olive, what's going on? <laughs> Patches? Sparky scrambles for the pole cord. He turns the light back on. Ow! Olive, oh doggy, cut you! The wand, it's gone! Who cares, are you alright? Oh yeah, I'm fine. Patches. It was Patches! I recognize that cute laugh from anywhere! Okay, that's what, that's what Ginger is. Ginger is like a yandere for, you know... The psychopath. He must have come back here to save me. Maybe he hasn't given up on me after all. Maybe I'm worth something. You. You were just bait, weren't you? Don't you even care what he's that he's using you? You're ready to die just because a windbag like Patches might think less of you. You realize how many times I give up if I thought like that? This is all my fault. You could all die here because of me. But I'm not just gonna sob in the corner until someone tells me it's not my fault. Ugh, I need to fix this. Sparky runs out of the cellar. Okay. You can choose to talk to Ginger. Or we can just leave. Hi, Ginger. This is a horrible idea. Oh, it activates chapter 4, actually. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Four chapters already. Um. Oh. Uh. Uh, let me just save here. Let me low, low, that's low. What happens if you talk, I assume you can like, you know, also increase hard points with her. Hey Ginger, what do you think of this? It's pretty spooky, huh? All the sticks are crumbling jackaline on her again. Oh, I already saw you do that with Sparky. Pretty funny though. Talk to Ginger. Are you okay, Ginger? I wish I could just make everyone happy. I should go find Sparky. Coco told me to make sure he doesn't get in trouble. Oh, I think you like Coco. She's magical too. And Brownie's really goofy. She probably chew you up at the least for a second. And Angel's really sweet and caring. He used to be ghost too. Angel? I don't think we get along. He's the one who hurt Patches and stole his body. Although I suppose Patches did the same to him. What do I do? What do I do, Olive? I don't know who to trust. Well, you can come back to the house with me. Not to fight Patches or Angel or anyone. Maybe it'd be nice to sit in the living room and have some cake. If you want. Okay, and then we ha uh, if we leave right after, she, she seems deep in thought. Bye, Ginger. Hmm. Hmm. I wonder if there's a reason for that. So let me just make two saves. So one save is one where we actually talk with Ginger, and the other one is the one where we didn't. Let's go back to the one where we didn't, and see, let's see if that changes anything. Anyway. Olive, I thought you were coming. You weren't coming for a second. Let's go. If Patches has the wand, who knows what havoc he's wreaking? I know. Olive and Sparky run as fast as they can through the woods. Sparky keeps his pace while Olive is struggling to keep up. Uh, Sparky, just so you know, I'm not mad at you. For any of this, it's not your fault. Run home. Huh. Well, even if things end up really, really bad, you're actually a really good boy. I say that a lot, but it's true, and everyone thinks so. The zombies seem to have collapsed in lifeless heaps. 
Now they're all dead. Like, really dead. Hmm. Forever loved. Both windows are splattered in blood and guts. Uh-oh. Wait. Ginger's ghost rises up from the cobblestone right in front of the door. Ah! Oh my dog, Ginger. You could have given us heart attacks. Ah, I'm sorry. I want to help for my own peace of mind. Really? Wow. Does this mean we're friends? Friends. This is great. I'm so excited. Olive dances around Ginger who stands flustered and confused. Ah, glad to have you on board, Ginger. Okay, she helps us anyway, even though we don't speak to her. And increase her, like, you know, affection points. Sorry about everything. It's alright. I just sort of realized you guys are pretty nice. Not to talk myself up or anything, but you'll need my abilities if Patches has the wand. Well, let's go find him then. Alright. Inspect table. Everyone was just here. Did Patches take them somewhere? Knowing him, he's probably waiting for us somewhere. Waiting? Why? He uh, talks a lot about all the ways he's gonna hurt you guys. And most of them are long and painful and it requires spectators. Ugh. How do you ever fall for a guy like him? You wouldn't understand. I think I might be... Insecure. Oh. Okay. Hmm. Let's save here. He has like a broken heart though, so... I don't know. These poor dogs. What happened to them? They were brutally murdered and then brought back to life. Well, I know that. I mean, I brought them back and gave them a chance to... Avenge themselves? Yes. Why are they up and avenging? Oh, I think Patches sliced through them a bunch of, a bunch of them earlier. I guess he sliced them even more after that. I thought he cared about these dogs. Well, he's lucky he's so cute. What was that? Nothing. Anyway. The kitchen. Stairs. Bedroom? Okay, here they are. Olive, run! All of Olive's pals are bound up in a magic wire. Shut up, traitor. Angel's mouth is bound. Ginger, you made it just in time. And you brought guests. Patches, you're talking to me again? Well, of course. I can do any of this without my lovely assistant. <laughs> Ginger, don't listen to him. He's just manipulating you. Wires grab Sparky. They slam him to the wall with the others. Enough chit chat. Let's get our new pets in a comfier space. Then we can really give Angel a show. Oz, thanks for all the pain he's caused me. Patches aims his wand and Olive. No. Ginger sends a blast of energy from her paw into Patches' chest. Patches seems to stand steady. So he falls over dead. The magic wires that bound all of his friends dissipate. Angel pulls himself up, coughing. Is he dead? Ugh, you bitch. <laughs> now, now he's also like a ghost. He's also back to his normal self. I guess his soul anyway. Patches? Patches lunges an angel. But he doesn't seem to make it. He's stopped midair by Ginger's magic. You, you assumed I'd be here just to pick up where I left off. I was so hurt when you turned your back on me. You told me I was a failure. Am I supposed to forget all that? Ginger opens a portal in the middle of the room. You wouldn't. You love me. Ginger begins lowering Patches into the portal. I'm not going down alone. Patches bites into Olive's leg. They fall to the ground and start slipping into the portal with him. Ah! Olive. But Ginger quickly closes the portal, but it's too late. Chapter 5? So many chapters. Ooh, here am I. Hello? Ugh. Patches, are you okay? What the? Oh, for dog's sake. Patches looks at his transparent paws for a moment, and then suddenly slaps Olive in the face. Ah! Did that hurt? Not really. It was really scary, though. Ah, Kevin passed the rest of eternity torture you. This place is far worse than Inferno. We're not Inferno? Where are we? We're in Purgatory, you don't. We didn't make it all the way through Ginger's shitty portal, and now we're stuck here, alone, all eternity. But I'm not alone, I have you! Oh, it's in love with me now, too. Huh? I'm not in it. No, you're a disgusting mutt that just shares love with everyone like a wild animal. You're no use to me unless you live for me and only me. What? It's okay to love lots of people, Patches. Don't you have parents you love or friends? You know what, Olive? I think I'd rather be alone for all eternity than listen to this after school special drivel. Patches begins to float away in the void of purgatory. Hey, Patches, wait! When you were forced out of your body, you ended up in the inferno of Ginger and the zombie dogs, right? Correct. Your point. How'd you get back? I got lucky. I found the soul of a powerful esper and got her to fall in love with me. She followed my every whim. It was a lot of fun playing with her, honestly. 
But now I won't be able to come back unless someone from the outside lets me out. And Ginger probably won't come back for me if she knows I'll kill her new friends. She's always been... Hatch your shutters. Sentimental. <laughs> Disgusting. Do you think she'd come back for me? Patch's eyes, Olive up and down. That's a very good point, Olive. Maybe we should stick together. Patch grabs Olive's arm, hard enough to hurt if they were alive to feel anything. I'm not letting you go until we're out of here, for as long as it takes. Okay, dokie, Patches. Okay. Hmm. So maybe it, does, it didn't matter that whether or not I got points with uh, Ginger or not, I don't know. It seems that we can just go to the next chapter anyway. It doesn't really affect any endings. Let's see, I don't know. Um, we can talk up to Patches, or we could just nap. All the curls up against Patches. The fuck are you doing? I'm gonna nap until Ginger comes to get us. I'll nap somewhere else. What if she comes you're not with me? We need to stick together, we're both gonna get out. Why do you want me to get out? After everything I said so far, do you realize I'm just a bit going to continue tormenting you and your friends? Okay, interesting. So there's a there's a problem to say Patches, or you can say nothing. So that's the pathway, I guess, if you don't have hearts with him. Olive silently curls up, leaving some space between them and Patches. After some time, they fall asleep. A portal appears in the void. Olive and Patches are asleep. Apollo reaches out and grabs Olive's leg, pulling him through the portal. Nothing. Let's close the portal before Patches comes through. Coco and Ginger close the portal. Olive, I'm so glad you're okay. Marky pulls Olive into a bear hug, which Angel and Brownie join. Wow, oh my gosh. It's so nice. Yep, I say the lack of serial killer in the house is a big improvement. Oh yeah, Patches. Please don't say we need to go back for him. No, I don't know if we should. Really? Well, I'm glad we're all in agreement then. Yes, it would only be trouble for all of us if you were to, to return. Ugh, let's not have a pity party. Let's have a birthday party. Yeah. Okay, there you go. That seems to be one ending? Olive seems a bit sad though. Almost everyone survived. Happy? Happy? But yeah, so that's one ending. Of course, well, I want to see a different ending, obviously. I also want to go back to, well, let's see, over here. We didn't really spend much time with uh, Ginger. In fact, uh, actually, let me load the one with... Uh, I guess this one? Was it this one? I can't remember if it was this one or... No, I said it was this one. This is the one with Ginger actually having hearts. Boop. 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 Okay, and then she wants to help us and everything, and we enter the house. Alright, let's uh, start a new save over here. Let's see. And also, like, inspect stuff. I don't know if it helps, but... Imagine, uh, Ginger giggles. And Olive just quit, quit joking around. I wasn't joking, I'm really trying to look for him. That can't be good. Sometimes I imagine Patches and I cooking dinner together. Wow, that's so romantic. You like cooking? Yes. I guess you haven't eaten anything for a while, huh? Ah, uh, well, I don't really like really cook to eat. I just like making things and sharing them with people. Aw. Olive tries to hug Ginger, but just kind of phases through her body. She appreciates the attempt. Okay. And also inspect the portraits, maybe? That's Angel and Coco? No way. They're so cute. Olive and Ginger put gush over how cute these cats are. <laughs> okay. Let's end the bathroom. On the sink. I've always wondered what Patches would like as a Dalmatian. Not that I care what kind of body he has. Does he miss it, being a Dalmatian? I think he does. More than he lets on. Well, it's hard to feel bad for him after everything he's done. I hate- I hate toilets. Me too! They're so noisy. I was slowly cut in half by a demon cat while hiding in a lonely, disgusting bathroom stall. I relive it every time I close my eye. Uh, that's pretty bad too. Okay. <laughs> um... Well, she doesn't have the biggest heart of us, but I guess it doesn't matter too much. Let's just go. Another the room. Alright. So the same thing happens, most likely. We end up with, you know, in purgatory with, uh, Patches again. Let's see if we can do something about this. Uh, ask about Angel. I've always wondered, why did you kill Angel in the first place? It was fun. No, why did you really kill him? Back in Coco's room, he called him a traitor. Oh, that? Forget it. Olive sulks. Fine, I'll just guess until I get it right. Was he super mean to you? No. 
Did he hit you? No. Hmm. Betrayal. Did he betray you? Hmm, good guess. He turned his back on me, even when he knew he was the only one I cared about. I mean, I hate him. I hate him, I've always hated him. Hmm. That's about hobbies. What do you do for fun? You were in the library lots at school, right? You like reading? It's fun, but mostly I like cutting up bad dogs in tiny little pieces. Is that really that much fun? It feels very productive. Like cleaning dust off a bookshelf. It's self-care in a way. Getting rid of toxic people in your life that only want to hurt you. <laughs> Without context, that's good advice, but you shouldn't murder them though. You'd kill me if you had a chance, right? Absolutely. But I don't think I ever hurt you. Uh, that's what you think. I know what side you're on. You're with everyone else, and I'm everyone's enemy. No, how could you say that? I want to be friends, not enemies. Of course you do. Well, give Patches a punch? No, that's about his body. It's pretty confusing seeing you look so much like Angel. I don't look like Angel, he looks like me. Alright. Do you miss your old body? Not at all. How could it compare to this rotting corpse of the one who, who betrayed me? And then had his sister come to my school and destroy everything. So you don't miss your old body? I like my old body. I miss it, but I know I won't be far from it for long. I'll take it back and maybe even give Angel a new body. It's just so I can torture it. That sounded so nice, except for the torture part. Punch. Hey Patches, that dog should be punished, right? Oh yes, punished dearly. Oh, it punches Patches in the face. He feels nothing, but is pretty pissed. The hell is that for? Olive growls softly. You're a bad dog. You're here because you're bad and you don't know how to talk to people. Okay. Olive gives Patches a huge hug. Why are you doing this? You just punched me. I don't know. Maybe you haven't had a hug in a while. I know I could always go for a hug. Olive hugs him really hard. He can't seem to get them off, so he just lets them hug him. Hmm, okay. I just ends up neutral, though. If I do that. So, let's see. Let's try again. So, yeah, the order is important, I guess. So let's see. Let's do this uh, betrayal. That's about his hobbies. Um. Give him a hug. Now he has a big heart. Or at least, you know, as much as we can. And everything else will just piss him off, I guess. So, nap. I don't know what you're doing. Nap somewhere else. Let's stick together. Promise to save Patches this time. But you don't deserve to be trapped in purgatory forever. I trust that you'll be a good boy and not hurt anyone. Olive curls up once more. I'll make sure you get out of here and get a slice of my birthday cake. Olive curls up and promptly falls asleep. This sounds like a bad idea. A portal appears in the void. Olive and Patches are asleep. A paw reaches out and grabs Olive's leg, pulling him through the portal. Got them. Let's close the portal before Patches comes through. Wait, 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 wait. We can't just leave them here. What? This is our chance to finally be rid of him! Please, I know he's a bad dog, but we can't give up on him. No one gave up on Sparky or Ginger. You've done some bad stuff too, Coco. Uh, they have a point. My life would be over if you guys gave up on me after everything I've done. You can't teach an old dog new tricks. He's not even that old, though. I mean, not that I'm defending him. Patches won't learn because he just doesn't want to. No, but it's my birthday! You already got your birthday wish, Olive. The whole meat thing. Meat thing? Okay, I'll grant your wish. Ah, oh, you got to be kidding me. All is right, but I'm not just saying that because I'm hung up on patches. Everyone is worth saving. We should have some conditions for him, though. Yeah, yeah, just tell me what it is and I'll do it. Okay. Is he... is he dead? Does dead even mean anything anymore? Patches wakes up gasping for air. Alright. This is his new body. He has like a Junibio eye patch though. Olive! Patches! Isn't it so exciting? With Ginger and Coco's magic combined, we fixed your body. We even gave you some angel's old clothes. But that's not your body though. <laughs> uh, no need to return it. I have to burn it. Hmm, nice one. Brownie gives Angel a high five. Rude. What the... Patches tries to sit up, but something jerks his neck back. What the hell is this? Patches throws a fit. He's trying to tear off the clawler. Though his teeth and claws are sharp, it does little against the strange glowing chains. The ginger gave me a magic leash. It's supposed to keep you from doing evil things. You only have to wear it until everyone's convinced you're a good boy. Well, time to be uh, a good actor. 
and then pretend to be good, and then, you know, plot your revenge in the end. Which shouldn't take long, right? I know you're a good boy deep down inside. Oh my dog, a leash. Really? Do you have any idea how demeaning this is? But this was the only way they let you come back with me. Eh, it's a good look on you, Patches. And you. So what? Does Angel own my body now? Why do I have to be stuck in this inferior twink's body? <laughs> That's rude. Inferior twink? Look, buddy. We're doing you a huge favor. Maybe you can have your body back once you've proven that you're a... A good boy. For now, though, you're stuck in Angel's inferior twink body. It's far easier to stop if he goes on a killing spree. I'm talking about my body like that. Wait, what do I have to do to, to, do to prove I'm good? Um, uh, 10 years of community service, maybe? Uh, um, don't manipulate anyone, don't stab anyone, and don't kill anyone. Olive's got you on a tight lease 24-7 just to make sure, too. What? Uh, we're gonna be best friends. Olive gives Patches a big hug. He's stunned. This is the best surprise birthday party ever. I have a new slave. I'm gonna kill you all in your sleep. Everyone laughs wildly at Patches' predicament. Ha ha ha, what a funny guy. Alright. I guess this is the true ending, I imagine, because I've done everything, so that's the old, that's the biggest difference at the end, is to actually help him up, you know? And actually not let, leave him to die. Everyone survived! Hooray! Um, we still haven't answered the... the we, we still haven't answered the issue about the thousand of dogs that have died in the high school, though? Nobody cares about that, still? Because they made a return, but then they kind of just fade into the background again because they got all murdered by uh, Patches, right? So, we still haven't answered that question. Because initially, Coco was the one who kind of just, you know... Like, you know, she's less evil nowadays, but she was the one that had the most kill count, you know? So like, I don't know, maybe eventually- Okay, well, let's just say eventually- I don't know if they have an epilogue or anything, but let's say eventually they, uh, um, Coco and Ginger, they combine their magic to bring back Angel's body, right? So I imagine maybe eventually they bring back everyone else, you know? It's just- it's just implied rather than said, I guess. Anyway. I guess these are the developers. Thanks for playing. Here's Denny, the bunny. Hello, my name's Denny. I made the game. My social media are Blender Ninety Percent Studios, Tumblr, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. <laughs> Just plug that in. I mean, they deserve it. It's their game, so. I'm most active on Twitch. Wow. And here's Denny. Follow Ninety Percent Studios when I see Merkin game animations. When I hear Andy say some horrible shit. Wow. Hi, I'm Andy. I'm helping with the programming of this game. I'm doing voices for real people. It's kind of weird. We make a few other games together too. Go check them out on 90percentstudios.itchu.io. Keep an eye out for a new puzzle game. Oh, okay. And I also I love patches. I don't know. You should you shouldn't love psychopaths. They, they burned you. Isn't, isn't the moral of the story not to trust psychopaths though? No matter what, they're just gonna kill you. You know. Thanks for playing. Bye. All right. All right. That's the end of the game. I imagine I got all of the endings. I think. At least all the endings I can think of. Anyway, I might have missed something, but I don't know. I feel like that's good. I think that's that's a good ending point for the second game of this trilogy. And then spoilers, there's one more. I don't know what's in store for us in the third game, but I guess I'll get to that after this one. But for now, though, I guess, yeah, there you go. Again, as I expected, it's just another, like, very cutesy... A goofy game with tons of very gratuitous violence, you know? I don't... I... that's just how it is, I guess. I like it. I... I don't know. I just have a thing for, like, something that's cutesy, but also incredibly horrific at the same time. I, I don't know. It's, it's just... I really like it. For some reason. I can't really explain it, but... It's kind of like my favorite genre, you know? When you mix, like, cute and scary at the same time. It kind of works. For me, anyway. I don't know if anyone else might find that distasteful, maybe, but I like it. <laughs> anyway, so there you go. I guess that was it for Perfect Apocalypse Purgatory Forever. I guess that was mentioned at the very end, the whole purgatory thing. Anyway, and I guess, uh, let's see, if you're on YouTube, if you didn't know, I stream these games live on Twitch, so you can check me out over there if you're interested. And you can also find my other playthroughs on the, on the YouTube channel if you want. There you go. Thanks for watching. Until next time. 
See you then. Ooh, ooh, ooh.